Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of my podcast, Is Breakfast Included? Now today on the show, my guest is none other than the coal miner's daughter herself, Christy Salters Martin. Now, Christy is a former WBC world champion. She's been inducted into multiple Hall of Fames and is the first and only female boxer to ever be featured on the cover of Sports Illustrated. She's also the subject of a Netflix docuseries, Untold Deal with the Devil. Now, I drove down to Austin. We had lunch. We discussed her boxing career, the documentary, the current biopic that's being discussed about her life and what she's up to now. Christy also gave me her opinion on the current state of boxing. I'll let her tell you all about it. Let's check it out. Are we ready? Cool. I think we're ready. Good to go. Uh, tell me who you are. Tell everyone who you are. I, I am uh, Christy Salters Martin and uh, coal miner's daughter, boxing world champion, WBC champion, um, inducted into a few Hall of Fames, boxing Hall of Fames, blessed by God. Right on, right on. Thanks again for doing this. Um, we'll get started right off the bat. We're going to talk about a few things. If there's anything you don't want to talk about, we'll edit it out. Okay. Deal with the devil. Yeah. That was uh, it was released about a month ago on Netflix. Yep. Um, it got a lot of attention. It brought a lot of attention to you. Like everyone read the story when when it happened of what that t- talks about. How did right. it feel for you to talk about that again and? I'm sure you did it to help other people in that situation, but was that, it hard? The, the, the whole point um, for doing the documentary was to try to help other people in the domestic violence situation, with the sexuality. I also, just, to, hey, it's an underdog story. You know, if I can do this from small town, southern West Virginia, coal miner's daughter, you know, just whatever your goal is, keep fighting. Don't let people tell you you can't do it. Uh, the more people tell you you can't, that should give you more motivation to work harder. Yeah. And and so that that's a, that's the reason for doing the documentary. And I think Lara Brownson and Netflix did a great job putting all the pieces together, um, talking to people from different parts of my life, and um, from the boxing people with Jimmy Maloney, my sparring partner, to Miguel Diaz, me Poppy, that I love so much. Um, that was my cut man and trainer at yeah. the end. So it, it, my family, um, that was well put together, and I really think that it hits the mark. You know, people are from different uh, groups of people are getting it. Yeah. And hopefully that helps somebody not go through what I had to go through. Yeah. So it's not just the boxing fan or boxing community that knows your story. Now everyone knows it because Netflix, as we know, reaches millions of people. Netflix is huge. I, I started like the first, actually it was the first day or two after the net, the documentary dropped. I started keeping a list of the messages like from different countries. Uh-huh. So I could tell Netflix, I got messages from, you know, 10 or 12 different countries. After about 10, I, I, I lost count and I was traveling. So I, I actually lost my the list. Yeah. But I mean, Netflix is worldwide. Everybody's watching Netflix. Yeah. Um, getting messages from, from all over the, the world mm-hmm. and uh People have invitations to come to London, you know, come to the, come, please come to London. We would like to, uh, you to come over and speak, you know, for domestic violence and it really makes a difference. Are you doing any of that? Have you made plans we're, we're, to do that? We're any working of that? on it. We're trying to get the, the stuff with the, the, the group from London together, but I've, I've been speaking, uh, I was in Kansas City actually the week before the, the documentary came out at a huge harbor, um, no, no, Hope House, uh, gala. They did a great thing for domestic violence awareness. Uh, we were in Virginia Beach. So, yeah, I'm out there. Right on. And so um, are you still getting messages every day? A- every day. And it, it like, of course, at the beginning when the documentary first came out, that was a flood of messages. But it it's strange. I, I Well, obviously, weekends people watch TV. <laughs> so yeah. on the weekend and then Monday, it, like the messages, and it's not just one or two messages. It's like. A, a big number of messages. Yeah. So, but I try to, I read every message. I respond yeah, to every message that I get, whether it be on um, Facebook or Instagram, wherever it comes from, I, I try to, to respond to every message. Well, I do know that for a fact because I, you were on my radar to contact because I found out you lived here in Austin. I saw your episode that day and I watched it and I said, that's a sign. Right. And I looked you up and I just emailed christy martin promotions and you responded right back and i kind of took a step back and i go eh 
somebody's screwing around with me. Right. But you you responded almost immediately, and I, I appreciate that. I have um I have some people that help me with you know my team, and and they ask me, um, Chrissy, would, would it be okay if we respond to some of these messages? And I told them no. No, I appreciate it, but no, I, it might take me a little time, uh-huh. but I want to respond myself. Uh-huh. And so when people get a message f- from Christy Martin, they're really getting it from Christy Martin. They're, yeah. they're, it's not yeah. just some made up words or, you know, uh, um, it's not like a stamped, you know, message <laughs> that everybody gets the same yeah. thing. Um, no, yeah. I, I, and, and, uh, it's important to me yeah. to let everybody know that I really appreciate the response. Yeah. Well, as a fan, every time, you- you responded to me or text me. I got all tingly inside. <laughs> that, that's but, cool. Um, a few years back, um, a few years back, there was talks of a biopic about you. I believe Amy Schumer was involved. Is there still talks of doing that? Uh, the the yes, and it's of course after the documentary, it's bigger than ever, and it, it is going to happen. It's um, hopefully within the next month or two, by the end of the year. Uh, we'll have a big announcement, but yeah, we've been, I've been contacted by a lot of major, uh, film producers and I really feel positive about that. It's going to happen this time. And yeah. again, people say, why would you do that? Why do you put your life out there? Well, I feel like that it's going to help other people. Yeah. And I feel like it's going to change the way that people see uh, domestic violence. Uh, it's not just brought about bruises. And I also feel like it's going to give some people a different look on sexuality. And then, of course, as I always say, the underdog, because Colmar's daughter is not supposed to make it. No, no. But you did. You did. I did. Um, as far as, um, can I ask you some questions about the aftermath of your, when, when, when um, Sherry Lusk came back into your life, you started to embrace your sexuality uh, as as opposed to hide from it, which, which, which you did for several years. Um, and then you were attacked by your then husband left for dead. Uh, she was right there with you the whole time as a friend at that point. She, she, um, so just to get everything straight, you know, the media really sensationalized uh-huh. the, the whole thing. Chrissy left Jim for a woman and, and she got, attempted murdered. (laughs) Um, but that really wasn't the case. I didn't leave Jim for Sherry. I just was leaving Jim and, um, Sherry did stand by me and, and we did rekindle uh, a high school relationship, uh, that, that was never going to work the second. It did work the first time around. It wasn't for sure going to work the second time around, but she did stand by me. She stood by me when she didn't have to. She, um, she was there through the, the, the hospital and the shooting and stabbing and, and then the recovery from that, and then just six months later, I had a stroke. So prior to that stroke, we had decided that we would go our separate ways because it just wasn't going to work. Mm-hmm. And I, then after the fight and the stroke came, she didn't leave. And, yeah. you know, the agreement was she could have. Yeah. Um, so even though the, the uh, relationship was never going to work as uh, lovers or as a couple, it, it, uh, she stood by me. Are as, you guys still friends? As a person, um, we're, we're we we talk sporadically. Yeah. Um, it's a tough relationship. It's <laughs> I can t- imagine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, but we're friendly. Once you once you made up your mind you were going to leave him, uh, did you also make up your mind you weren't going to hide who you were anymore? Once I made up my mind that I was going to leave him, I knew he was going to kill me. I mean, you knew that. I knew. I, mm-hmm. I knew it was going to kill me. It was as simple as when I walked out the door, and and you know we talked about it in the documentary. He said to me something about can I well can I go with you? And I'm like no. And he says, well you know that if you leave me, I'll kill you. And I said to him, do what you have to do. When I drove away that day, I knew that um, I knew it was going to kill me. When I, I left Sherry that morning on Tuesday, November 23rd, 2010, and I told her he's going to shoot me, and. Um, she she was, you know, it's hard for somebody to believe that yeah. when you know, if you would tell me, oh, if I'm somebody's going to kill you, he, yeah. yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. But she was like, well, if you really feel like that, why are you going back? And I said, well, I have to go back because I have to either live or die through whatever he's going to do to be free. And that's that's exactly how I felt about it. I was like, you know, if he kills me, I'm okay with it because I was that low in my life. And uh, if I live through it, well, I'll, I'll figure out how to get back on my feet and, and move forward. But I really 
anticipated that he would just shoot me in the head and I would be dead. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, something a lot of people have a misconception of is when you're a celebrity, when you're on top of the world, that you're not going through domestic violence. You're not going through mental abuse. You're not going through physical abuse. Um, And you showed everybody, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how high life you're living, it can happen to anyone. And by you doing that, it, it, I feel it's giving everyone a voice to, because, I mean, let's face it, I grew up in the 70s when I was a kid, and there was a time when domestic violence was okay with people. Like, right. they just got swept under the rug. And, 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 and the, the, the bad thing is, it still does in many communities, and, um, and with a certain segment of people, and, and, and a lot of that is the older generation, they don't really uh, understand or see that this yeah. is wrong. Yeah. Um, and so you're raising children that are seeing it, and then those children just uh, replicate what they're seeing. Yeah. Uh, so I agree. It's, it's tough, but yeah. but I do think that you're right. Uh, people saw me as a strong woman physically, so you assume if someone's strong physically, they're strong mentally and emotionally. Yeah. But they, you don't really understand that the two don't always go hand in hand, and most often probably don't go hand in hand. You're strong physically because you're weak mentally. Yeah. And um. That's what that's what was happening. You know, I was in front of the camera. I always say that I was I smiled and was happy, and I was happy. I loved boxing, but behind the scenes, it was it was hell. Yeah, it was hell. And and again, I, I feel like if I had bruises, if it had been physical all the time, I could have gone to my dad or somebody and said, "Look, what he's doing to me." But because it wasn't physical, it was more mental, mental. emotional, controlling. Um, Thank you. I, I, who was I going to tell that could understand it? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We are also having lunch, guys, <laughs> to the listener. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'll get it back. Um, also, because you, you were known as this powerhouse, your walk to the ring, when you'd get in there, you were a monster in the ring, and no one could really... No one really believes, oh, she's getting, but like you said, it was more of a mental thing. It was more of holding something against you. you know. it, it was always uh, a mental beatdown with Jim. He would some way be able to tell me I mean, the greatest thing, the most cool thing that happened to me, like, uh, for instance, a cover Sports Illustrated. I mean, that was pretty cool, and especially back in the 90s. It really meant something. He, he told me, well, it was really about what I did to get you on the cover. It wasn't what he did. Yeah. It wasn't even supposed to be on the cover. It was just because of the fight. I was supposed to be just a regular story on the inside. Uh-huh. And then um, because the fight was so uh, tension grabbing, yeah. we got moved to the cover. As long And they called me and they're like, you have the cover, Christy, as long as nothing major happens in sports. So like no one dies or, you know, somebody doesn't do something crazy. So I sat there for two weeks. Waiting. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, please, everybody stay healthy. Um, but but he always tried to make it about what he had done or what he was going to do, not what I was going to do or what I had done. Um, well, you said it did mean something then. That cover still means a lot now. Oh, oh absolutely. I mean, to me, it means a lot. Yeah. Um, how active are you in the LGBTQ community? Um, not not really. Um. And part of that is because of all the negative that I spewed out during my career. Mm-hmm. That was, uh, you know, was spewing because Jim was encouraging me to say negative things. Uh, and I would often tell him somebody's going to come from the past and, and say something. Uh, but I was lucky on that point that they didn't. Uh, I just, you know, I, want, I would like to be more involved, but mm-hmm. I, I think that Maybe I, I, I burned the bridges. Yeah. But hopefully people can see the documentary and, and understand that, that I was under a lot of pressure. Yeah. The position kinda, you were in. You know, in, in America, we all deserve a second chance, right? So maybe. That's what they say. <laughs> maybe they'll give me a second chance. Um, because I, I do feel like, and I have spoken out so much about how important it is for parents to to understand their children that are 12, 13, 14, 15 years old, whatever, when they come to them and say, I'm gay, or you even maybe think they are, for you to say to them, are, are you gay? Or yeah. do you have, do you, would you like to talk to me about something? 
open up the communication so yeah. they feel comfortable to talk to you about their sexuality. Yeah. yeah. And I think these days more parents are like that. But I, I think there was a time in life where it was just, no, you're not, you're crazy. And that happens with everything with, you know, if you, I, you can't go to, you, and there was a time when you couldn't go to your parents and say like, I'm sad. And they wouldn't say, well, maybe it's depression. They would just say, oh, right. Drink a Sprite. You'll feel better. <laughs> right. Right. You know, right. Here's absolutely. Some, here's some Vicks. <laughs> right. Right. No, you're absolutely right. And, and, and then that's something that, ex especially like in a small town, yeah. y you know, they don't know how other people are going to perceive them or you and, and they don't want to, I don't know, I guess risk what they see as humiliation maybe yeah. or not being normal. I, I don't, I don't know yeah. what the but right what word normal, to say right? is exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm done with the normal thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it's, it's tough because like I said, in my small town, I know there are young children that are not young adults, I should say that are gay and they're hiding and it's yeah. sad. Yeah. It's sad. And I know some that have tried to come out to their parents and their parents are, um, like not accepting. It's a shaming or disowning right. or, you know, yeah, it's yeah. sad. I, I grew up in a very small town too, where that mentality is, I'll say this and I'll probably get a lot of flag, but it's still there. Right. You know, right. Um, to get back to that movie, who do you hope plays you? You know, I am not really a movie buff, so I don't know. I don't know. I I used to be like crazy. I watched all the movies back in the in my college days. And then when I met Jim, you know, he was 25 years older than me. And all he wanted to do was watch black and white movies. Like, mm -hmm. Audie, I can tell you all about Audie Murphy and, <laughs> and John Wayne and all those kind of movies. Clint Eastwood, which I'm really not. I know he's moved into our generation, but, uh, you know, all the early stuff. So I, I don't know. I have, I'm trying to get back in the swing of it. Yeah. Watching movies. But. I, I don't know who I think would be you a good me. have to get back into it so you can pick, this yeah. is who I want to play me. Yeah, I mean, there's some <laughs> names that have been thrown my way, and I have to Google everybody and see who <laughs> you know, they're talking about. But, yeah, I, I don't know. Mm. I, I hope it's somebody that is kind of new to um, that kind of role. Yeah. Not, not, I, when they called me and told me. You don't want them told, to get a boxer to play no, you. No, no. Yeah. When they ta told me that Schumer was going to be, w was interested in the role, I was like, Schumer? I mean, there's nothing funny about my life, and and I don't I couldn't make the connection, but I, I did hang out with her a couple times, and I I think I think she could have pulled it off. Um, we had fun together. I mean, we're both a lot alike. That we'll tell you in a heartbeat what we think. Yeah. Uh, but we're also very different as far as like I think everybody should have a gun. Yeah. And um, she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so like, there's some pretty big issues that that we're real opposites of. So I, I don't know how it would have worked out in the end. Right. Um, your name was brought up uh, a lot. There's a boxer by the name of Amanda Serrano. And your name was brought up a lot a few weeks ago on this Jake Paul undercard because she's really close to your knockout record. Right. How do you feel about that? Do you hope she breaks it as a, you know, as a support or do you hope it to stay strong? Yeah, no, I think she's going to get it. And that's fine. I, um, I think Amanda Serrano is um, like she's real. She's a, she's a real fighter that that works at her craft and and does it because she loves the sport. Mm -hmm. And there's so many that want to come in and they think they love it, but they really don't work hard enough. I, I think she 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 has and she has charisma. Yeah. Like she's a personality that if a major promoter would get her, and it's kind of getting late in her career, but if a if a major promoter would get her now or had gotten her early, I think that they could really made a star out of her. Yeah, yeah. Um. How do you feel about the current state of boxing? I know you're a boxing promoter. The current state of boxing is it's tough. I mean, um, wow, what do I mean by that? I mean that the, the social media superstars coming in and doing air sport, I mean, it's great for them. Hey, if you can figure out how to get paid, I'm all about it. But I don't feel like it, it's giving our sport any credibility. Yes, people tell me, but they're making people talk about boxing. Yeah, but are they making people talk about boxing in a serious way? It's a sideshow. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I think I think boxing is in a tough position right now. Um, 
you know, as far as like even with the Olympics, we don't have coverage of our boxing team, so we have no idea as boxing fans, you know, who's coming out, yeah. who's coming out that's going to be the the next superstar, mm-hmm. you know, who's going to be the next Sugar Ray Leonard, who's going to be the next Oscar mm-hmm. De La Hoya. We don't know. Um, boxing is a tough sell. It's hard to get sponsors. It's unless, of course, you're you know, uh, Fury Wilder, <laughs> and then. They're, I'm, I'm sure they're not having any, any problem, but um, it's tough. It's tough. I think there are very few fighters, there are f- very few Sean Porters, uh, Danny Garcias that are taking fights. You know, they just take fights. Yeah. Uh, that's about the, that's about the the uh, the length of that list. I want to ask you this, and you can answer if not. I know you're a promoter, and you don't want to be biased. My my view on the current state of boxing is is the. Like you said, there are very few Sean Porters and Danny Garcias, but then there's fighters out there who are great businessmen who just know that that zero on their record is going to keep making them money, and they're more worried about protecting that zero than taking a tough fight like they did in the 80s, like the Durans and the Leonard's and the Haglers. Exactly where I was going. I mean, let, let's look at when we had the last group of superstars. We're probably talking about the, the 80s uh, when we had... Leonard Hagler Duran Hearns, um, you know the, the the heavyweights Ali Frazier, um, Tyson Tyson came along. You know in the nineties we we had the Tyson Holyfield. So it takes those guys that are just that will fight and and yeah of course everybody wants to protect that O but it is and boxing is a business. But at some point as a fighter. Don't you want to know if you can fight or not? Yeah. Don't I you mean, want to I, know if you can beat the best? I, I, I know guys that are 20 and 0 and they fought 20 guys with losing records. I mean, how do you even consider yourself a fighter? Um, and that was part of, like, as a female fighter coming up, it was hard for me to find opponents. So, I mean, that's where I got to. I was like, I, I want to fight real fights. I want to fight. Someone that I know can fight. I want to yeah. see if I can if I'm good at this or I'm not. Yeah. So I feel that all the greats had losses, yourself included. Um, and then there were some greats that didn't have losses. Like a, I I I I'm not a fan of Floyd Mayweather's. He he gets a lot of flack, but I feel he did fight a lot of the best fighters out there. Floyd Floyd is a very. I mean, what Floyd does defensively is amazing. Yeah, he's a very um, defensive, and people look at that as running. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at it as running. people have no idea how much work it is to be that guy. It's not my uh, uh, fight style that no. I want to see, but uh, you have to give him appreciate. You have to appreciate what he does, and he's done it better than anyone. Um, yeah, he, he, we could look at it and say he fought a lot of big names, but he fought. Oscar not in his prime. He fought. Um, he, he beat Canelo when Canelo wasn't to his prime yet. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the the fights that he had were timing. They were smart picked. <laughs> smart timing. <laughs> smart timing. Yeah. Um, but he's he's a great fighter. And and but uh, even with that being said, I think if he were fighting back in the eighties with that group at one thirty five, one forty, mm, altogether different. Well, he'd have to fight them in their prime. He would have it, to fight them. It wouldn't them. be like, like you and said, he would have to fight. Yeah, the de- being a defensive wizard wasn't going to work against those. It wasn't. It wouldn't even work against. Um, yeah, I don't know who it would work against. Like Aaron Pryor would just go through somebody like yeah. that. Yeah, he would not stop punching. No. You, you might miss the first two or three, but four, five, and six are coming. Yeah, yeah. And he would take a punch to land that one. Yes. Um, was there ever a fight that? That you you regret not happening, that you wanted to make that didn't happen. Well, you know, of course, I I wanted to make the Lucia Riker fight and um, had signed the contract, was ready, was uh, about to leave my house actually uh, to catch a flight, and I got a call from Top Rank's office, and they said that the fight was off, that Lucia had gotten injured. You know, I, I'm pretty sure that I don't believe it today. Oh. I didn't believe it then. I, there's never been any, there was never at that time, any talk of, um, like, let's put it back together. Yeah. But she went off, started doing movies, right? 
<laughs> yeah, she and the whole thing was I I think she was backed into a corner that she knew that if she ever fought again she had to fight me. Yeah, she couldn't just come out and fight anybody. She had to fight me. Um, As a boxing fan, it was a fight that I always wished would happen, but it didn't. Yeah, no, I, I certainly it was going to be a great payday. I don't know how anybody pulls out on a on a million dollar payday, but she did, and yeah, yeah, that one hurt. <laughs> One more boxing question. Who's the greatest boxer of all time, in your opinion? Um, Henry Armstrong. Oh. Yeah. He went way back. Yeah. Yeah. Henry Armstrong. Yeah. Is that who you kind of took your fighting style from? Or? No, I think my style was probably more Joe Frazier, Mike Tyson. Um, but, yeah, I think, I mean, him or and Hank, you know, he did it in, what, five different weight classes yeah. when there were only – Seven or you know nine nine classes, and he was he was champion in five or three. It was I crazy. think that's who Roy Jones wanted to pattern himself after, as far as championship yeah. fights. He wanted yeah. to have belts in all the the weight classes. Yeah, but you know then we didn't have the juniors and the supers and yeah. all these extra weight classes that that we have today. So, and we and we also didn't have twenty five belts in each yeah. division or five different. Uh, yeah. Sanctioning bodies. Oh my goodness. Um, so, how long have you been in Texas, Austin? I have been in Texas since um, about October of eighteen. What's your take on Whataburger? I, I, I'm not a I'm not a Whataburger Whataburger <laughs> fan. I uh, yeah no. Yeah. I'm an East Coast girl. I, I mean, coming to Texas. I would never be in Texas with with you know if it weren't for uh, my wife Lisa. Uh, I would be, I would be probably be back in Florida or <laughs> I guess there's a small chance I would be, go back to Vegas, but um, <clears throat> I'm pretty happy on the East Coast. Yeah. Do you ever get offers like what um, these fighters like Riddick Bow and Evander Holyfield do? do you, does anyone ever come at you and go, hey, you want to do a yeah. a fight? You know. Yeah. Uh, actually, not too long ago, someone said, "You know, I, I think I can get you half a million dollars to to box." And and I really, I was like, "Okay, it sounds good." And then I talked to Lisa. The doctor said I can't get hit in the head after having a stroke. And but I was like, "Well, if the doctor, you know, it's okay. We'll figure it out around the doctor." But Lisa said, "No, no, <laughs> you're not getting hit in the head." And you know, I have a ch- basically I had a choice. <laughs> and you know, I don't know if you're married or not, but. You don't want you don't want that fight every day <laughs> or any day. Yeah. And how was that? Her coming off as a boxer who you railed against to end up being with. Yeah. Um, you yeah. guys ever settle it like that? No. <laughs> and and we try to both of us try to not have a conversation about that fight. Yeah. And of course, lots of people want to talk to us about the fight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I actually sparred with Lisa uh, after the fight a few times yeah. about maybe three or four times I brought her into Florida and um, she's the only woman to ever knock me down. I mean, really even Layla didn't knock me down. I took a knee. Yeah, you took a knee. Um, so Lisa dropped me. I, I was getting ready to leap in with this big left hook and left my feet. Boom. And she hit me with this little upper cut, upper hook kind of thing yeah. and, and dropped me. And I was like, Oh shit, how'd I get down here? <laughs> but yeah, she's the only woman to ever drop me. So I have to give her credit for that. But yeah, that's a that's one of those subjects that we try to avoid. Yeah, <laughs> Christie's champs. Let's talk about that. Christie's champs. We um, we're trying to do a lot of really really good things with Christie's champs. I have different gyms, local gyms. We've we've put computers in gyms. Uh, we have mentors. We have tutors. Uh, we're trying to make it where it's open to you if you want to go do boxing. But it's also there if you just need someone to talk to, if you would need a computer access. I, I'd never been so proud, I don't think, of, of Christie's Champs until, I mean, lots of things, but this is the top thing. Uh, recently, one of the guys that owns a gym, he told me, yes, yeah, so-and-so, he filled out his college application at the gym because he doesn't have a computer at home. And I was like, wow, look what we did for that kid. You know, yeah. we made it, he was going to do it somewhere, he would have found yeah. a computer, but we made it accessible and and hopefully a little easier yeah for him to to get that done and so that made me really proud that that you know we're making a difference yeah and you also have christy martin promotions where you promote fights do you have any fighters that you have high hopes for 
you know, Christy Martin Promotions is still growing. I, I, I say that I've made it up to maybe a six round fighter promoter level. Um, I have Anthony Sevilla, who's a tough kid from West Virginia. Uh, he's two Oh and one. He was just recently beating the crap out of, uh, Julio Gomez in Myrtle Beach and just kind of got complacent, relaxed and, and got caught with a hell of a hook and dropped on his face. There's no way you, you know, as a fight fan, most of the time when you get knocked down and you land on your face, you don't get up. This kid got up and, uh, was able to make it through that last maybe 15 seconds, which also worked in his benefit of the round and then finish the fourth round and, and come out with a draw. Mm-hmm. Um, because he had knocked Julio down early. But he, I think he has a really good future. I think he just got a little bit comfortable, comfortable, confident, mm-hmm. and got caught. Um, also, this kid, uh, Benny Tony Aguilar out of Crescent City, Florida, he's 6 0 now. He's, a, he's Arturo Gatti. He's Arturo Gatti like. Um, crowd pleasing, fan friendly. Everybody always loves him. You know, he's going to be in a fight. When they're done, they have to be a fight. Yeah. He's going to be a in a fight. Back. He's just going to go at it. That's that's his style, and and that's probably why I love him so much. Is we, he just wants to fight, yeah. and he fights the same. You know, if it's if it's in the gym sparring, or if it's four rounds, if it's six rounds, whatever. He's the same fighter. I'm going to make that make the fight happen. Yeah. So hopefully, like uh, you said, whether it's he's in a fight or not, he's he, going to be in. He's going to be in a fight. And um, uh, I have a kid, Victorino Gonzalez. That's he's from Myrtle Beach. He's trying so hard to make that next step up, but he's he's ran into a couple, couple tough fights. Um, so ho- hopefully uh, November twentieth, he'll get everything turned around and and get back on the winning track and and now uh, you know move on to being a contender at some point. That's awesome. Well, I know we tried to do this before, and there was some connection issues. I'm going to have to ask you this question again. It's called "Is Breakfast Included?" And we're eating lunch right now. But if we were <laughs> eating breakfast, what would you have? Uh, for breakfast, I would probably have, um, wow, it just depends on the day, but uh, usually I'm an omelet, um, like cheese, mushrooms, jalapenos, omelet with, um, sometimes I'll have potatoes, not often, most of the time it's fruit. Nice. Yep. Nice. Well, thank you so much. Um, I know I tell you, I said this at the beginning, I don't want to sound cheesy, it's an honor just to sit here with you, whether you were doing this or not. I've been a big fan of yours since you burst on the scene on that Tyson Bruno undercard. Um, of course, what you went through, you're an inspiration to a lot of people, and I wish nothing but the best for you. Thank and you. And I can't wait to see who <laughs> plays you in this movie. Yeah, me either. But, but thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come over here to well, Austin today. Well, thank you for taking the time. Let's get it done. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Right on, everyone. That was Christy Salters Martin. You can find out more at ChristyMartinPromotions.com. You can see when she's putting on fight cards, what she has going on. You can also find out information about Christy's champs and what you can do to help. Every little bit makes a difference. All right, guys, I'm done. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you next week. <laughs>